Hey brothers and sisters, God bless each and every single one of you. It's Hunter's Point here with another video. Uh, I just got back from one of the best nature walks I think I've ever been on. I mean, it was just beautiful outside. I mean, it's nice getting out of the house anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes a day to really just take in the beauty of God's creation. I mean, minus everything going on in the world, you can still find times to really enjoy the beauty of God's creation. And I try to do that anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes a day. I'll usually go on a three-lap walk outside my house right around the block. And it's just really nice getting out of the house and uh, getting that sort of one-on-one -on -one time with God. I'll usually listen to praise music as I'm walking around uh, my three laps. It's just beautiful. And uh, it was possibly one of the best nature walks I've ever been on. Uh, today. I just got back from it. So I figured I'd sit down and do this video. Uh, you know, I never get tired of doing these rapture vlogs. This is number 34. And as much as I love doing scriptural messages and world news updates, and of course, Love Talk Revisited, I really enjoy getting to do these rapture vlogs. You know, these vlogs give me a chance to just talk with you guys, right? Not have to worry so much about structuring you know, uh, specific world news updates or writing Love Talk or anything like that. I can just vent. I can just rant and ramble on about things going on in the world or in my life. And this particular vlog, I will be focused on an experience that I had. You know, uh, this is a video that's probably about three years in the making. Uh, even before I was saved, I had an experience, and I wanted to finally share this experience. You know, I wanted to share something that I experienced back in November of 2017. This would have been before I was saved, you know, because I was saved in January of 2018. And I had this experience back in November of 2017. So this would have been before I was a born-again believer. I can remember it was Thanksgiving Day, and me and my family were visiting my grandparents' home for dinner that afternoon. And there was a football game on that day between the Minnesota Vikings and the Detroit Lions. Yeah, I don't know how big you guys are into football. I'm not really a football guy when it comes to the NFL. I mean, if a game's on, I'll watch it. But most of the times, I'm usually doing something else or changing the channel. But uh, the game was taking place from Ford Field in Detroit, Michigan. And again, it was between the Detroit Lions and the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, me and my uncle were watching the game out in the living room after our big Thanksgiving feast. And something weird happened as I was sitting in the chair... You know, because uh, the the way it is in my grandma's house is, you know, you have the TV facing forward, and then back towards the wall, you have the couch, and then you have the chair next to the couch on the on the left hand side. And I was sitting in that chair watching the flat screen TV, seeing the game between the Detroit Lions and the Minnesota Vikings. And again, it was taking place in Detroit, Michigan, from Ford Field. Uh, and something weird happened as I was sitting in that chair. I had now what I understand to be an open vision. You know, again, I'm not very, um, I'm not an expert when it comes to like dreams and visions and stuff. You guys have to understand, I'm not one who really has dreams or visions, right? I do not have these experiences often. I've never actually had a dream in my entire life when it comes to, you know, a biblical dream, a rapture dream, something like that. I'm, I'm not one who dreams a lot. Uh, I just don't. Usually when I go to bed, it's pitch black until I wake up. So I really don't have a lot of dreams at all. But especially when it comes to a biblical dream, I've really never dreamed in that sense before. And I've only ever had two visions in my entire life. And the first vision is the more significant vision. And it's the one that I'm actually going to explain to you right now. That's the subject of this video. You know, during the football game, the camera switched to an overview, a sort of an aerial drone-like shot over the city of Detroit. So it, the, the camera angle, you could see it from above, and it just has the whole city of Detroit, and you could see the stadium right in the middle of the screen, Ford Field in Detroit. And it was sort of an aerial overview shot of Detroit, Michigan, and it was a beautiful autumn day. It was Thanksgiving Day 2017. Uh, or it was the Thanksgiving game, rather, uh, though I believe it actually was on Thanksgiving Day. So that is when I had the vision. I saw a nuclear weapon being detonated over the city of Detroit during what seemed to be a normal day. There are many details about the vision I really can't remember because this vision happened almost three years ago. Uh, and I didn't know as much biblically as I do now because, again, this was before I was saved. Uh, but there are a couple of things that I can remember very vividly. Um, I could vividly recall the mushroom cloud, you know, that big sort of nuclear detonation where you could see sort of the, the clouds of shock waves and then the big mushroom cloud. I can remember that over Detroit. 
Um, and I can vividly remember how big the explosion was, the bright orange glow associated with nuclear activity. I can remember seeing the shockwave run across the ground in all directions, and the ash was just raining down on Detroit. I never saw in the vision really who was responsible for the bomb being dropped or anything like that. But, you know, I do remember very, very vividly the explosion itself, the shockwave, the mushroom cloud, the ash falling down, all of that. Right? That was the vision that I had. It was pretty horrifying, to be honest. Again, this was before I was saved, so I really didn't understand 100% of what I was seeing. And to be honest, I'm still not the best at, like, interpreting dreams and, in, in, in this case, a vision. So I'm, I'm kind of having to really rely on God here and make the best sort of... um. Oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Sort of the best estimated guess or prediction as to what I was actually seeing in my vision. Um, but that, yeah, again, that was the vision I had. Uh, I had no idea why I was seeing that, but I suppose now I can understand just a little bit more. You know, I'm, I'm constantly throwing around questions in my head. Like, what if my open vision that I had that I just shared, what if it's in regards to, you know, the tribulation period, you know? What if my open vision corresponds with those who have dreamt about New York City being hit by a tsunami, which was actually my second vision, by the way. Um, or California experiencing the big earthquake, or Yellowstone erupting, etc. What if my open vision kind of corresponds with others who are having open visions about, you know, really, really big explosions or natural disasters, things of those natures? Uh, what if these dreams and visions are, de are depicting events that will likely happen during the seven-year tribulation period? Yeah, I'm not being dogmatic or anything by any means. I'm just asking some questions. Could our dreams and visions be precursors to something that actually happens in our world for those who are left behind after the rapture? Yeah, I'd be curious to hear your all's thoughts on um, you know, my dream, or in this case, my vision, rather. But I would be curious to hear some of your all's dreams or visions that you've experienced in your lives. And again, if you're just going to be negative and be a naysayer and rail against me for explaining my vision, feel free to not watch this video and, and watch some of my other stuff if you, if you don't care that much for dreams and visions. If you're going to say something negative, I'm just going to delete your comment and possibly even block you from the channel. So uh, I'm really not in the mood to deal with a whole lot of negativity, but... You know, I, I just wanted to come on here and share my open vision regarding Detroit because I've really been fighting the Lord really hard over the past several months where he's wanted me to share it and I've been very hesitant to come on here and share it because I'm a channel that focuses on scriptural messages, world news updates, these rapture vlogs, of course, as well as Love Talk Revisited. I do not specialize in the dream and vision department. All right, these are not things I experience often, and I was very, very hesitant to come on here and share it, but I trust that you guys won't be rude or arrogant or harsh, or I'll just delete your comment. I trust that you guys will remain positive and kind, and again, I'm curious to hear any dreams and visions that you all have had in your lives, but when I think to the actual vision of you know, the, the um, nuclear explosion over Detroit, I immediately think like, okay... Could it actually be something that happens in the future regarding Detroit? Or what if it's symbolic of an explosion that does happen over a major metropolitan city in the future that isn't Detroit, right? So even if it's not Detroit, what if it's symbolic of something that could happen in a major U.S. metropolitan city during the tribulation or even as the rapture happens? Because I know Pastor Tim always says, you know, as, as they go down, we go up. So I, I think about that as well, but... I just wanted to bring my vision to your all's attention. I mean, again, this is like three years in the making. I've really been wrestling with the Lord about whether or not I actually wanted to share this. I've kind of had this bottled up inside for quite a long time. Uh, I talked with a sister in Christ, and she encouraged me to share it if the Lord wanted me to share it. So um, here you go. I shared it. So that'll conclude the vision. I'll give you all the gospel, then head on out of here. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. I mean, it never gets old, right? That is the gospel that saves. 
right? That is what saves us if we believe it in our hearts, that Christ died for our sins, past, present, and future. He was buried in the tomb three days, proving he was dead, and he rose again from the dead on the third day, according to the scriptures. Why? For our justification, right? We are justified, we are saved by faith alone and Jesus Christ's finished redemptive work. So if we believe that gospel alone for our salvation and eternal security, we are saved, okay? And we are spiritually baptized into the body of Christ. They happen simultaneously. John 3, 16 through 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved, right? Please believe on Christ if you haven't. Right? I mean, the Philippian jailer asked Paul and Silas in the book of Acts, right, what must I do to be saved? And you know what they told him? And they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved in thy house. That's Acts 16, 31. It all comes back around to believing the gospel alone, right? No amount of good works will ever save us and give us and, 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 and get us freeway into the kingdom of heaven, right? You know, you know, we don't get off scot-free because of our good works, okay? For by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Ephesians 2, 8, 9. Please believe on Christ, guys. The moment, the nanosecond you guys believe on the gospel of Jesus Christ alone, you're not only saved, but you're indwelled with the Holy Spirit, whereby you're sealed with it into the day of redemption. Again, Ephesians 4, 30 is one of my all-time favorite verses in all of Scripture. It means you can never lose your salvation for any reason, even if you decide to walk away. You really think anything you ever do in your life is more powerful than the seal of God? Of course not, right? Nothing can separate you from God's love, so it's important that you remember that. So again, I'm not exactly an expert on dreams and visions. This is the first time I've ever had a vision that the Lord's really placed on my heart to share, so I hope I did an okay job at sharing this. I hope I've been able to glorify God by this video. Again, you know, I really think that it could be depicting tribulation events, which we know, right, that the church will not be here for God's wrath. So if this vision was about something that occurs in the United States during the tribulation, if that's close, we know that our redemption's even closer, right? So rejoice in the fact that we're not going to be here when it gets really bad, right? We're not appointed to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. I believe that's 1 Thessalonians 5, 9, right? We are not appointed to the wrath of God. And if this is depicting an event that, you know, would, would be an example of the wrath of God, we know we won't be here for it. And another thing that, you know, before I shut it off, I just remembered something here on the spot. So in the dream, right, I told you that, you know, the camera view, the sort of the view of my vision was an overview aerial shot, almost a drone-like shot of the city of Detroit as the nuclear detonation happened. Right, so I was viewing everything in a sense from above. So what if we're already gone when this happens and we're viewing it from above? Or what if it happens, the, the bombs go down as we go up, right? So I was viewing this from above, so just remember that. I think that's interesting. Again, I trust you all. I'm, I'm sure there's plenty of you that are better at dream and vision interpretation than I am, but I just wanted to make sure I came on here and shared this with you all. I've been very hesitant to, but uh, the Lord just finally led me to share it. I mean, he had been kind of wanting me to share it for a while, and I've been wrestling against him, but I was done. He wanted me to share it, so I came on here and shared it, all right? And I also gave you all the oh-so-simple gospel eternal security message. So I will leave the video here, and I will see you guys in the next video, whenever it is, should the Lord tarry, right? Otherwise, God bless.